Alright, so taking a look at more normal distribution problems. Um, remember, in, for my calculator, we're going to use NCD. We need a lower limit, an upper limit, our standard deviation, and our mean. And it's important that you draw a picture to help you see what you need to solve. It really helps out until you get your head totally around this. So a machine produces pellets following the normal distribution with a mean weight of 62 and a standard deviation of 4 grams. So in any picture, the mean is always going to be down the middle. I'll have a 62 there, and we often write our standard deviation just off to the side like so, and those are both in grams. And the question here is what percentage of pellets weigh between 66 and 70 grams? Well, it's helpful because we need to figure out which part of this curve we're trying to find is to think about that 66 will be above 62, and 70 will also be further above. And in fact, each of those are a standard deviation up, because the standard deviation is 4. 62 plus 4 gets to 66. 66 plus 4 gets to 70. So that's what I need to find. The area of that is going to be equal to my probability. So the normal curve, the calculator, you can do the lower limit of 66, upper limit of 70, a standard deviation of 4 and a mean of 62. And if we put this into our calculator, 66, 70, I already have 4 and 62 in there, press enter, I get 0 0.1359. But be careful, they're asking me for a percentage. This is a proportion or a probability, so I need to times by 100 and that will get me to roughly 13.6% of pellets will be between 66 and 70 grams. So sometimes the problems ask for things that are a bit trickier. What is the probability of a pellet being less than 59 or more than 67? So watch out for that. We're not talking about between 59 and 67. Here we need to think about if 59 is roughly here and 67 is roughly here. I've got my mean at 62, my standard deviation is still 4. I want the pellet that is less than 59 or more than 67. So I need all that information, but it's in two different pieces, so I don't really have a lower and upper limit that works for both of them. There's a couple of ways we can solve this problem. But I'll go through one of them first. If you remember, the total area of this curve has to be 1. So if I solve this stuff in the middle, and then subtract from 1, I should get what's left, all the blue stuff. So if I go 1 minus the stuff in the middle, which is 59, 67 for my lower and upper limit, a standard deviation of 4, and a mean of 62, if you put this into your calculator, fifty nine and sixty seven zero point six six seven seven. Sorry, that was one minus all of that. So one minus zero point six six seven seven. That's going to be equal to zero point three, three, two, three. And I might write that in blue because that's the that's the blue area. That's everything else that was left over. That's this bit and this bit over here. So again, because my total area equals one, if I need two different sections, I can solve for the part in the middle and subtract away from one that gets me the stuff on the outside. So that's one way to go about solving the problem. Um, I might leave it at that, because that's kind of a good intuitive way to do it. Um, but I'll show you another, as we go on, you'll see another way to do it just by looking at the other problems. You could solve it in two pieces by doing the lower and upper limit on these. So find this, and find this, and then add them together. And for these normal curves, you have to remember they go on kind of forever. So you can't give a value like, say, 50, and say that that's low enough to catch everything. 
you have to use a stupidly small number to make sure that you get everything in there. So your lower limit, if you wanted to use it for this situation, or for any, you'd use 1, negative 1, on your calculator, the EXP button, and 99. So that's a stupidly small number. And over here, you could use 1E99, a positive number, which is a stupidly big number. And that would, be ins would ensure that we covered everything, essentially, above 67 and everything below 59. So I guess I'll write that out. You could go as an alternative, a lower limit of negative 1, EXP99, to 59, with 4 and 62 plus the other section in blue, which is 1EXP, the positive number, 99, comma, oops, sorry, the lower limit there is 67, and the upper limit there is the stupidly large number. Remember that EXP means times 10 to the 99 in this case, so that's 1 with 99 zeros after it, um, 4 and 62. And if you add those two together, you should still get 0 0.3323. So whatever way is easier for you to look at solving that problem, find the stuff in the middle and subtract away, or find the two bits on the sides and add together. Your choice. Um, part C, what is the probability of a pellet being greater than 60? So again, I want to think about 62 is in here. And greater than 60? Well, 60 might be somewhere in here. And greater than 60 is everything above it. So sometimes people end up using a bit of symmetry, and they can be aware of the fact that this bit out here is equal to 0 0.5, because it's half the curve. So they could solve between my lower and upper limit of 60 and 62, and then add on 0 0.5. Or if you've got that idea that you need a stupidly large number for your limit, you could do, again, one EXP 999. I'll show you how that looks on the calculator this time. So if you have the top edge and you need to go out and find the end of that tail, use a stupidly big number, and that's an example for it. So you have, in this case, NC, my lower limit is 60, my upper limit is 1 EXP 99, positive 1 because it's a stupidly large number, my standard deviation is still 4, my mean is still 62. So my calculator, how that looks, it's going to be a lower limit of 60, and an upper limit of 1 EXP 99. And again, that means 1 times 10 to the 99th power, so that's 1 with 99 zeros after it, a stupidly large number, and it will work for you. 4 and 60 till is still the same, and here you get your probability, again the P, 0.69, so 0.6914, and that would be your probability for the whole section there. Um, and it is bigger than 0 0.5, you should be aware of that with common sense as well, it's more than half the curve, so if you got a number less than half, you'd be a bit worried. What percentage, again here we're looking for a percentage, what percentage of pellets will be less than 70? So here's my standard deviation, or my mean in the middle again is 62. And I'm looking for things that are less than 70, so that's quite high. And I'm looking for everything underneath. So, since I'm looking for all this, and I'm going out to the ends here, I need to think of using a really stupidly small number, so that's negative 1 EXP to the 99. which is the same as 1, negative 1 times 10 to the 99th, again, if you want to write it out that way. So that is going to be my lower limit here, negative 1 times 10 to the 99, or EXP 99. My upper limit here is 70. Standard deviation is 4, and my mean is 62 still. So here, a minus 1 EXP 99 
my upper limit is 70. All that's the same. So here I can see that 0 0.9772 is my decimal, my pr proportion or probability. And I need to times by 100 to get to a percentage. So that's 97.72% of pellets are going to be less than 70 grams. And that makes sense because 70 is almost two standard deviations above. Well, it is two standard deviations above the mean. And so that's a lot of um, pellet sizes that can be covered for everything below that. Part E here, what is the probability of a pellet being less than 57 grams? Again, I've got my 62. 57 is somewhere down here. So I need to find everything down here. So I'm going out the end of the tail, so I'm going to use minus 1 times 10 to the 99, or negative 1 EXP 99 for my lower limit. My upper limit will be 57. I've still got my mean and my standard deviation of 4. So my lower limit, 1 EXP 99, upper limit of 57. A standard deviation of 4 and my mean of 62. I'm putting this into our calculator. My lower limit is still there. My upper limit now needs to be 57. And here I get 0 0.1056. So that's my probability, leaving it as a decimal or a probability. So one thing that you need to possibly remember for yourself, there's your mean in the middle, your standard deviation you can just write off to the side, and if you need to use your lower limit down here, you can use negative 1 EXP 99, and again that's the same as negative 1 times 10 to the 99th power, because it's a stupid small number. Tiny, tiny, tiny number that will cover everything below the mean. And up to this end you need a stupidly large number if you're going to carry on and you need everything above it. So that's the opposite. 1 times 10 to the 99 or 1 time, sorry, 1 EXP 99. And again that's because it's a stupid large number. So you might out of habit have different numbers that you've used before, but if we use a super big number and a super small number as our limits where those tails go out, that ensures that we pretty much guaranteed to cover almost anything that could possibly happen above or below the mean. So if you need to use those for limits, go ahead. Otherwise you might have numbers that make sense, such as between 59 and 67.